on that note we are ready to start custom development yes we finally reached a stage wherein we are ready to start custom development the 41 slides that i had before were important to understand and now we'll look into why do we need custom development we'll start with the why first right it's not important to jump into learning something directly before even knowing why uh, can you do this why should i do this first that's important right so let's understand the why why do we need custom development so salesforce is a crm tool it provides a lot of out of the box capabilities that lets customers easily configure by using point and click mechanism right by setting up automations by setting up any kind of journeys for the end users correct but not every requirement can be handled by the out of the box or the standard tools sometimes requirements might be complicated sometimes they might involve a capability that is not available out of the box and sometimes the system has to come into fruition to be able to write custom code and achieve that particular use case correct in such cases where salesforce as the platform tool or the out of the box tool is not able to provide what is needed in terms of a business use case or a scenario is where salesforce developers and custom development comes in and pretty much all the projects require something custom if i'm talking to about a mid to a very large size business there's a lot of requirement of doing something custom because there are a lot of things there are a lot of different things that the standard out of the, out of the box tools cannot handle right which is why you have to go custom and that's where you and i come in that's where we salesforce developers come in okay you require some custom development and some hardcore coding some really good coding is required and that's where we come in right so that's the why the second question is when when should i go custom right i know let's say i am a very skilled resource who knows flows who knows triggers who knows custom validation rules page layouts admin stuff who knows uh, let's say sharing and security who knows apex and who also knows writing asynchronous or synchronous and other stuff when should i how do i choose my line where is my line how do i draw that line that okay for this requirement i have to go custom or for this i have to stay standard so there are some key ideologies that you can follow right so if there are requirements you have where, where you have to interact with the third party system let's say let's say you have to do a complex integration with a third party vendor right and you have to handle some call outs for you know any kind of third party servers and they are not straightforward you go custom okay if you have a if you have to work on a use case that has a lot of calculations a lot of if and else or a lot of nesting a lot of decision driven uh, logic like you know there are 84 parameters or maybe 500 things that have to be changed that cannot be achieved and will get too clumsy in a flow or a process builder that time you can go custom right let's you have to work with the internal system classes you want to reference a label you want to query and work with custom metadata or settings or you want to do something around the transaction security right these kind of mechanisms you want to lock your rows before when, whenever an update is happening you want to enforce sharing those kind of scenarios you have to work you can go custom right or let's say you have to create and configure a custom interface the client is not happy with how the standard ui looks like they want you to go custom meaning they want you to create a aura component or a lightning web component or a visual force page and there you have to have a custom screen which means you also have to have a custom controller meaning an apex controller meaning a custom server side code so that's when you have to go custom all right because remember what did i say in standard versus custom whenever you create something custom it's entirely your duty to do everything around it salesforce will not handle any and everything for you they will not touch anything that 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 is custom right everything has to be handled on your end you can also go custom whenever you need to write logic when a database change happen right meaning triggers this is nothing but triggers so if you want to write code that handles scenarios where a record is created updated deleted undeleted these kind of things can be handled via custom coding also if flows don't let you go that that deep so you can go custom make sense this is when you should go custom right and there's there's this always this debate of uh, me who is someone who know, who knows flows and uh, custom coding there's all i've always seen this debate of why are you going with flows or why do you have to go custom or why don't you go with flows and why uh, why don't you go with custom right so this completely depends on use case to use case basis 
it's not about whether you know it or not it's about how the problem can be solved better correct so you should be thinking that way if a requirement is very straightforward let's say whenever this record is updated i want to send out a notification to 10 different users and i want to just to update one field on the record go with the flow why to write code go with the flow that's okay but if you have a requirement uh, ah, okay i want to uh, choose these users and then send them a message in whatsapp and then when they reply i want to initiate a uh, bot session and then i want to do this and that and i want to do 24 other calculations and i want to handle three different objects come back to code it might get too messy in the flow side correct so it's, it's all about that it's all about maintaining that balance so that in future you're able to maintain the flow or maintain the code and at the same time you're able to satisfy the business use case that's the end goal right so that clarifies when should i go custom